Welcome to the weekly CAG podcast, where we take a moment to look back at the previous message on Sunday morning. If you haven't done so already, download the CAG app. The CAG app is available wherever apps are available. So take a moment and download that. And if you haven't done so, also take a look at our website. Our website is charlotteag.org. Both our app and our website are a great place to go back, watch previous messages, watch previous services. You can also watch our live stream from both platforms. So I encourage you to take a look, download the CAG app. It is a great tool to stay connected with the church and also to grow deeper in your relationship with Christ. Well, without further ado, let's grab a cup of coffee, maybe a notepad, and enjoy this message from this previous week as we dig deeper into Christ and what he is doing in our lives. I'm going to have you turn your Bibles to Hosea chapter 2, verse 14. So Hosea chapter 2, verse 14, if you could turn there, and when you get there, just let me know by saying amen. Hosea chapter 2, verse 14 through 15 says, Therefore... Behold, I will allure her and bring her into the wilderness and speak tenderly to her. And there I will give her her vineyards and make the valley of Accor a door of hope. And there she shall answer as in the days of her youth, as at the time when she came out of the land of Egypt. Let's pray. Father, we love you and we give you the glory and we give you the honor this morning. Holy Spirit, I pray that you would just help me to communicate your word. I confess I'm 100% dependent upon you. There's nothing I can do on my own accord, but Lord, I'm leaning into you and I'm trusting you. Lord, I pray that you would give us ears to hear, eyes to see, and a heart that would perceive all that you have for us in your precious name. And all God's people said? All God's people said? Are we good with live stream, Gabe? Do you know? We're good? No. Okay, that's just what I want to know. Just want to know who I'm talking to this morning. We're good now. All right. Welcome to all those on live stream. So we are on live stream? All right. I can't see that far. I don't have glasses on. I learned a long time ago that one of the most crucial jobs of leadership is to define the current reality. Let me say that again. I I defined, let me start all over. Can't even get my words out. I learned a long time ago from a great mentor that leadership defines the current reality. There's a part of leadership, part of our personality when we lead is we want to be optimistic. We want to sprinkle sugar on top of it, and we want people to know that everything's okay. But I think it's really important for me to share this message that's on my heart because it truly does define the current reality for us, I believe, as a church and really as a nation. And that is this. We are in a place between what we know God has done, and what we are hoping God will do. Let me say that again. Current reality. We are in a place that has us between what we know God has done and what we are hoping God will do. We are in between what God has provided for us and what God has promised to us. And it's not an easy place because when we see these types of places in Scripture, it's referred to as the wilderness. 
Now look, every leader wants to be Joshua that leads the children of Israel into promised land. Every leader wants to be the John the Baptist making the way for Jesus, right? But the truth is for every Joshua, there is a Moses that leads the people through the wilderness. And for every John the Baptist, there's a Jeremiah that leads the people through exile. And when I look at the current state of our nation and what we're going through as a church, I could bury my head in the sand and just pretend that everything is wonderful and everything is going okay, but you would know that's not true. If you're virtual educating, if you've got your kids at home and you're logging them onto a computer every day, you know that the world is not okay around us. If you flip on the news, it doesn't matter what news station, you would know very fast that the world around us is turbulent and the truth is, is we're not where we want to be and we're trusting God to get us there. I love this verse in Hosea chapter 2 because it's this promise to us that says, I am going to bring a harvest into your life, but the route to the promise is through the wilderness. You don't get to the promised land unless you first pass through the wilderness. And as believers in Jesus Christ, I want you to understand that your journey will be cyclical. Every time that God promises a harvest in your life, every time that God wants to take you to another level, another understanding, revelation, whenever he moves in your life in a powerful way, often it is preceded by wilderness times. Ecclesiastes 3.1 says to everything there is a season, a time for every purpose under heaven. I can say this morning, praise God, the wilderness is not forever. And you may say, well, Shane, how, how do we know that we're going through a wilderness time? I think you know. I don't think you have to give a huge description. But just in case... You're not sure. Let me read to you the words of Job. Job 23, 8-9 says, Look, I go forward, but he is not there. And backward, but I cannot perceive him. When he works on the left hand, I cannot behold him. And when he turns to the right, I cannot see him. Do you realize that there are moments in our faith journey where it seems like God is not working? And we look to the left and we can't see him there. And we look to the right and we can't see him there. And there are wilderness seasons that we will all go through where it seems dry and extra difficult. And we think to ourselves in moments of prayer and in moments of desperation, we think, God, where are you? Why aren't you working? Why aren't you doing the things that I know that you can do? God, show up in my life. And we cry out those prayers only to hear silence. Ever been through a season like that before? And I want to tell you this morning, with a big smile on my face, that everything is going to be okay. But there is a whole generation of Israelites that witness the power of God only to die in the wilderness. Many times the wilderness season is difficult and challenging and it causes believers to fall away, to drift from the Lord, to turn away from God. And and we've all seen it. We've all witnessed people who hit a bump and it got difficult and it got challenging and the tough times are tempting when we're frustrated, even upset with God, to turn away. You could call it doubt. You could call it disillusionment. But we can't grumble and we can't complain because the promise was before the children of Israel, yet that hot sand below their feet controlled them. And instead of of receiving God's grace, 
they were rejected by God's righteousness. And, and that makes me nervous because I recognize that when we go through wilderness times, that God is looking at our response. Second Peter 2, 19 through 21 says, For whatever overcomes a person, to that he is enslaved. For if after that they have escaped the defilements of the world through the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled in them and overcome. The last has become worse for them than the first. For it would have been better for them never to have known the way of righteousness than after knowing it turned back from the holy commandment delivered to them. I, I read verses like this that are spoken to the church and it causes me to pause because I recognize that there are seasons that we can go through that are so tough and so challenging that there is a temptation for us to not press into the things of God, but there's a temptation for us to turn back and, and go back to what we know and what is comfortable and what is familiar. And, and I just want to encourage you with this. When we go through wilderness times and if you're not in one, you'll go through one. When that temptation to turn back is so real and, and so tangible, we have to remind ourselves that we can't turn back. That we have to keep moving forward. And when I say the best is yet to come, I believe that the best is yet to come for the people of God. I recognize that God's promises are, are yes and amen in Christ Jesus and we have attached our hope to him and we have attached our heart to what he can do through us and accomplish for us. I recognize the truth of who God is, but I want you to understand the best is yet to come for the people that are obedient to the words of God. And so when God speaks to us and, and God whispers to our heart and he reveals his word to us, our responsibility should be in those times to be obedient. Deuteronomy 1 verse 35 says, Not one of these men of these evil generations shall see the good land that I swore to give your fathers. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, 1 through 6 says, For I do not want you to be unaware, brothers, that our fathers were all under the cloud and all passed through the sea and all were baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea and all ate the same spiritual food and all drank the same spiritual drink for they drank from the spiritual rock that followed them and the rock was Christ. And nevertheless, with most of them, God was not pleased for they were overthrown in the wilderness. Now these things took place as, watch this, examples for us. The generation that was delivered out of Egypt didn't make it into the promised land. And scripture tells us that this serves as an example to us as believers. Sorry, is it too heavy? I'll encourage you in a minute. I promise. Smile. I, I'll, I will encourage you. But can we just take a pause? They saw signs and wonders. This generation would have seen the Red Sea split in half. They walked across what should have been muddy and wet, difficult ground. But Scripture tells us that when the Red Sea opened up and they were able to walk across, that they walked across on dry ground. They saw miracle after miracle, God's provision and God's mighty hand, and yet they are the same generation that died in the wilderness, never entering into the promises of God. And 
And do you know what defeated them? Not their enemies. The enemies of God didn't destroy them. In fact, if we look at Scripture, when the children of Israel are traveling through the wilderness, they were harassed by other nations, outside forces. And, and Scripture tells us in Numbers 21, 21 through 25, that the children of Israel defeated the Amorites. It tells us in Numbers 31 that they defeated the Midianites. It, it tells us in Numbers chapter 21 that the people of Bashan, all of these people, these other nations, these outside forces, they were defeated because God's desire was not for them to be defeated in the wilderness. And so God gave them victory over all of their enemies. The problem with the children of Israel when they were in the wilderness was not some outside enemy because God's intent was to bring them through. The problem was inside. Because God was with them and God was for them. And he gave them victory on every side. Imagine watching the, the world's biggest army come after you, the Egyptians, only to be drowned in the Red Sea. And so when I read Hosea chapter 2, 14 through 15, it says, Therefore, behold, I will allure her and bring her into the wilderness and speak tenderly to her. And there I will give her her vineyards and make the valley of Accor a door of hope. This actually encourages me because I recognize that the wilderness is not God's disapproval, but it is meant for his development. That when God wants to prepare us and to work in us and do something unique in our lives, in our heart, in our church, in our community, that he oftentimes will lure us into the wilderness first. And we have to know that God will use the wilderness, the difficult times, the challenging times, the dry times. He uses them as preparation for us for the greater things that he wants to do in our life. The wilderness is that season when we are in between what God has provided for us and what he has promised. And my encouragement to you this morning is this, and I'm encouraging myself as well, is that we do not grow weary in doing good, but in due season we know that we will reap a harvest if we don't give up. The way into the promised land goes through the wilderness. In Luke, we have this story of Jesus being baptized. It's miraculous. Jesus walks onto the scene and John the Baptist is in the wilderness baptizing people and Jesus comes to him and he says, you need to baptize me and, and John the Baptist at first resists and and we see this moment in, in Luke chapter 3 where Jesus is baptized and the Holy Spirit descends on Jesus like a dove. And, and audibly they hear the words of the Father said, this is my son in whom I am well pleased. He appoints them and he approves of them. And then the next verse we see is the Spirit of God drawing Jesus into the wilderness. It says he was led there by the Spirit. Think about that for a minute. This, this amazing moment in Jesus' life only to be led into the wilderness. See, God leads us into the wilderness not to abandon us, not to leave us or forsake us. Can I tell you that when you go through wilderness times, God is not forgetting about you. In fact, he brings you into the wilderness to do his best work in you. 
And I want you to be encouraged with this truth. Even in times where we can't perceive what he's doing, we can trust his word that says he is working in us. And do you know that the wilderness, according to Hosea chapter 2, is, is not a dead end. It's actually a door. And Scripture says it's a door of hope. It's the beginning of a harvest. Every farmer has a moment where they take the seed and they smash it into the ground and they cover it with the dirt. And it's this moment where they look around and they can't see any vegetation. Yet in time it brings a harvest. I think one of the greatest uses of wilderness season is it causes our hearts to be tilled up and to be soft and pliable again for the seed of God's word. Ezekiel chapter 36 verse 26 says, and I will give you a new heart and a new spirit and I will put within you and I will remove the heart of stone from your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. The wilderness is used by God to work deeply in us. And it's when we go through seasons that are dry and difficult, when we're in between his provision and his promise, it's in those seasons that God will begin to test our hearts. And he reveals to us what we're relying on instead of relying on him. And those dry seasons have the ability to begin to break up that hard ground of our heart. And so the way to the promised land is through the wilderness. because the wilderness is truly for our benefit and not our detriment. But I know that when we go through difficult times as believers, it's really important that we recognize that God is with us and for us and he's doing something unique within us. And there's a temptation to turn back and to stop short and to be frustrated. I heard this a long time ago. I think it's fairly true. The teacher is always the quietest during the test. Many years ago, I, when I first got saved, I had a powerful salvation story God was just so real to me, so evident. I felt like every time that I prayed a prayer, God would answer it right away, even a parking spot. Just thought, God, give me the best parking spot, and and boom, there it was. It, It seemed like every time that I would open up my Bible, it didn't seem like it was true. Every time I opened up my Bible, there was like this fresh word, this fresh promise that spoke directly to my heart. God just was working and moving and directing and guiding. And it was one of the most incredible seasons of my life. In fact, from the time I was 17 to I was about 20 years old, God was just, it's like the heavens were open pouring over me. And then I walked into a season where without any notice. I didn't get an email, I didn't get a text message. It just felt like God was gone. I couldn't feel his presence. I would open up my Bible and I think, man, I don't even understand when I'm reading this, it doesn't make any sense to me. 
I remember going into worship services and, and trying to worship and trying to pray, and it just was difficult. It was just hard. And one month passed, two months, three months. God, where are you? Four months. God, I, I don't have a sense of what you're doing. Five months, and I kept trying to grab a hold of Holy Spirit, and six months, seven months passed. And finally, after seven months, I was in a chapel service, and there was one of our professors had a prophetic word, and I remember her delivering that prophetic word. I remember thinking, God, I, I don't really believe that's for me. That's probably for everybody else. That's probably not for me. And I doubted it in my heart. But as she prayed over us, something amazing happened. I was as kneeled there. My, my hands were on my face, and my eyes were closed, and I felt the Spirit of God go from the top of my head to the bottom of my feet. And I remember thinking, wow, this, this seems incredible. And I went home that night. I got ready for church because we had church Tuesday night, Wednesday night, Thursday night, Friday night. I went to church and for the first time in months, seven months, it's like the heavens were open and I could sense his presence and I could fear how near he was to me and I felt alive again. That was a Tuesday. That next Saturday morning in my time of devotions and prayer, I was reading Isaiah chapter 43, verse 1 through 3. And I'm going to paraphrase it for you this morning because I don't have it on the screens. But it says, Fear not, for I've redeemed you. I've called you by name. You are mine. And when you pass through the waters, you won't be overwhelmed. And when you walk through the fires, you will not be burned. And I thought, wow, that's a really encouraging verse. And I felt like Holy Spirit said, go ahead, read it again. And I read it for the second time. And, and the second time I read through the verse, I thought, wow, this is really encouraging. I really appreciate what's being communicated. And then I heard Holy Spirit say, read that another time. And I read it for the third time, the part about where I don't have to be afraid that he'd redeem me. And that when I walk through the fires, I won't be burned. And when I walk through the waters, I wouldn't be swept away. And when I read it that third time, there was this revelation and this understanding of how much God was with me and for me. And I began to cry there in my little room in my apartment because in that moment I recognized that all of those months where it was dry and difficult and I couldn't perceive what God was doing all of that time God was with me it's amazing how when we get through to the other side of wilderness experiences how when we look back we can see how faithful God has been and what God did do, and how he did sustain us. And so I want you to be encouraged this morning by Jeremy Davis coming up here right now. <laughs> I want you to be encouraged, because I recognize if you're watching at home, if you're sitting in the room, has anybody ever gone through anything like this before? It's challenging, isn't it? Nobody says, okay, November 22nd, it's going to be the beginning of a wilderness season for my life. But you know, we've been called to a life of faith, a life of believing and trusting. And so when you go through those dry times, because if you're not in one, heads up, you will be eventually because they're preparation. They're a path. When you go through those times, it's important to know that God is working and God is moving. And when I look back at those seasons, those are some of the most precious moments in my walk with Jesus Christ. 
because I recognize that he trusted me with difficult moments. The wilderness is not God's disapproval, it's his development in our life. And so I want you to be encouraged with this truth. The best is yet to come. The promises of God for your life remain. And he who promises is faithful. Amen. So this is how I want to close. I want you to stand all across the room. If you can join us at home. And Jeremy's going to sing this. Waymaker. And I want you just to begin to worship and to praise and to give God glory and God honor because he is leading us through to all of his promises that are yes and amen. Amen? Come on, let's worship God. Let's give God praise. You are waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God. That is who you are. You are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God. That is who you are. Oh, that is who you are. 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 Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. Never stop, never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop. Never stop working, you never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. Never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God. That is who you are, cause you are a way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are, oh that is who you are, that is who you are, and that is who you are, that is who you are. That is who you are. That is who you are. And that is who you are. And that is who you are. You are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God. That is who you are. Come on, church, give him praise. Give him glory. Come on. Give him the glory. Come on, give, come on, one more time. Give him praise. Give him glory. Yes. Come on, just give him a shout of praise. Give him a shout of praise. Yes. 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 Jesus. 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 So here it is. Current reality. It feels like a wilderness, but there's hope because we know that the wilderness is the route to the promises of God. Amen. Let me pray a prayer of blessing over you. But before I do that, let me ask you this question. Do you have a relationship with Jesus Christ? Because scripture tells us 
that there is no other way to heaven but through Jesus, that he's the way, the truth, and the life. And so you could be in the room, you could be watching this morning, and you're not for sure that if this was your last day that heaven would be your home. I want you to have that assurance of Jesus. So we're gonna pray this prayer together. You ready? Dear Jesus, forgive me for all that I've done that you call sin. Wash me, cleanse me, and make me brand new. I give you my heart. I give you my life. Be my Lord, be my Savior, and my very best friend. In your precious name, amen and amen. Come on, give God praise. Give God praise. Yes, all of heaven is rejoicing. Scripture tells us that your name is written in the Lamb's book of life. And if you want help with that journey with Jesus, you can comment, let us know, let a staff member know. We want to help you and we want to encourage you. But one more prayer. You ready? I want to pray a blessing over you because the best is yet to come. Amen. God is leading us. God is directing us and he has his hands upon us. Amen. Would you lift your hands to heaven? Father, bless them. Lord, I pray that you would keep them. Lord, may your face shine upon them. Lord, I pray that you would speak to their hearts and you would direct their steps. Lord, if they find themselves in a challenging place, a, a place of weariness, and they're wondering, God, what are you doing and where are you leading me? God, I pray that you would lead them into a greater place of trust. Lord, bless them with the ability to lean in and to hold on and to turn towards you always. And Lord, I pray that you would strengthen them. And Father, may you keep them healthy and may you keep them whole this week. Whether they go to virtual school or to work, God, may your blessing be upon them. God, because we know that we didn't come to church today. We are the church. And so, Father, may you be with them in your precious name. And all God's people said, Amen. all God's people said, Amen, Amen. God bless you. May you have an incredible week. Thanks for watching today. I hope you've been encouraged by the Word of God, by the living person of Jesus Christ today. Hey, just a reminder, if you haven't done so already, download our CAG app. It's a great way to stay connected and to continue to watch these sermons on demand. Man, have a fantastic day. We hope to see you soon.